All right, let's talk for a minute about ore selection. We're running Carlisle ores on this boat. They're a relatively inexpensive aluminum shaft with a uh, plastic sleeve over it. Um, I'm running ores, ore rights with sleeves, and this allows me to slip my ore in and out very easily. If I want to pull this ore all the way out, I can slide it up like that, and it comes right out of the ore lock. Uh, a lot of people like ore locks because they're really easy to use that way. Um, these particular oars have a breakdown shaft on them which load really nice in the airplane. Um, I've got the blade is a separate piece so if I bend a blade I can uh, change it out. If I bend one section of the shaft I can discard it and replace that section. I can also get one foot extenders. Um, depending on how your boat's rigged up you might need to, to run longer shafts uh, on your oars and so you can add those extenders on it makes a big difference. Uh, a couple other things, um, this boat has rubber grips on the handles, makes it really easy to not slip off the handles. Uh, if you don't have the rubber grips on there, then the ends of the, the handles are just plastic and they slip really uh, bad with regular gloves. So that's one thing to be aware of. Another thing is the color of your blades. Um, I'm running black blades on this boat and uh, that's, a, that's a pretty good color, but keep in mind that um, when you dip these oars in the water, that black blade is going to disappear. So if you're trying to make a stock on an animal that you see downriver and you're trying to drift down to it, every time you put your blades in the water, they disappear. So from the animal's perspective, that's a lot of motion. They're going to see that blade disappear. I would probably prefer black blades over yellow, though. Uh, the yellow blades are really bright, and that's going to really stand out to an animal that might see you coming. So. If I had a choice, I'd run my, I, I would run with uh, black blades. Also, you want to keep your ore locks nice and quiet. Uh, the one here on the right's got a little bit of a squeak to it, so we can put some cooking oil on that, or graphite, or gun oil, or whatever we have, uh, just to keep that sound uh, deadened. Uh, blades come in a couple of different sizes. Um, these are the ones made by Carlisle, and they come in either an eight and a half. Uh, I think they call it an eight and a half outfitter blade. Uh, which is eight and a half inches wide, and then you've got the six and a half inch blades, which some people prefer for whitewater. Uh, my preference is the eight and a half inch blade. You get a lot more uh, bang for your buck when it comes to positioning the boat and uh, maneuvering and so on. We're not floating whitewater when we're float hunting, so uh, the eight and a half inch blades work really well. There's also a lot of different types of ore shafts and blades that you can come up with. Uh, there's composite shafts, there's wooden ores. Wooden ores don't work so well for Alaska because everything's got to go in those little bitty airplanes. A lot of people favor the compound ores because they're lightweight. Uh, also the compound ores have a... Uh, you, one company makes a blade that is filled with foam and then it's got plastic over the outside of it. Those, bl those uh, blades actually float. Um, so some people like a blade that floats. One thing you want to make sure you do on your boat is bring a spare oar. Um, normally we have the oar rigged up and tied along the side so it's easy to deploy. In this case we took it apart and we stowed it down on the floor of the boat. It's unlikely we're going to need that spare oar on this trip but we have one with us in case we do bend a shaft or something like that. Okay.